John 4, starting verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither cometh hither to draw. And Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. Verse 17. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that saidst thou truly, sayest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. May God bless the reading of his word. So, one area I think that we don't see a lot is the idea of Jesus speaking as a prophet of God. Now, the reason why this is important is because we're building a case for the supernatural Gospels and Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, if you look at how we've kind of dealt this all out, you know, we talked about... Uh, Jesus uh, proven to exist with the help of history and archaeology. We have um, talked about the uh, massive proportion of fame that Jesus Christ has. Um, I'm trying to see, I may have forgotten. Let's see here. Well, I'll keep going. But Jesus existed. And Jesus had fame. And we also talked about how Jesus is, um, you know, reported to be supernatural, but that's okay. Because philosophical argumentation shows that we can't have a pure scientific worldview. It just does not add up to logic or coherence. Now, um, hmm, I feel like something's missing. So forgive me, just make sure you watch all of them up here. Um, nevertheless, there is something to be said about uh, the supernatural. And not just whether it's physically true, but um, is Jesus that level of authority? Now, when we're dealing with the Gospels and the critical biblical scholars, they make a, an assumption. That assumption is that the Gospels were not miraculous. They were not supernatural. The Bible says that they were. They say, no, no, we're going to break God's word. In John 10, it says the word of God can't be broken. So, as we look at this, uh, there is a... Um, a gateway into these things and you know the scientific worldview cannot be simply materialistic and I shoot I show that in that video but now that we're opened up to the possibility that there's not something that's just stuck in a uh, materialist manner we can start looking and observing it's not uh, demanding to ask if Jesus exists and we know that you know, he did. So, you know, what caused this amount of fame? What is making all this movement? Especially if it's not something inspired to God. Well, um, when we look at Jesus, we see some things where he prophesies. He spoke for God. And there are several predicted prophecies that he made. I'm just hitting with a couple. 
So the first thing is that um, there are long-ranging prophecies. And that's important because a skeptic will want to say, oh, well, you're just taking this way out of context or that way out of context. But no, there were Bible prophecies that were fulfilled or that are currently being fulfilled. So we can look at Mark 13.10, Matthew 24.15, and 24.35. And um, also in Luke, I think it was 2, 19 through 21. Let's see here. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no that's a different uh, prophecy. But these prophecies are regarding... Let me see if I can find it here. All right. <laughs> these prophecies are regarding long-term effects. But what is it that gets them there? How can they last that many years to even check? Well, obviously, God has preserved his church that long. If Jesus was a normal man, he would not know that. But yet, it did. And they did. And so, um, when we look at these prophecies, we know, A, that they have a long-range plan. One of which was found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21. It says, um, find it again. Uh oh. Oh, I know what I'm doing. All right, Luke 2, 19. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, okay. I just have to look it up. Sorry. Okay. Luke 21. And I'll start at verse 40. Yeah. 21. 24. And they shall fall by the sword and shall be led away captive into the nations. Okay, you could say that's um, 70 AD. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be no signs, sorry, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars upon the earth, distressed nations of perplexity, and the sea waves roaring. So now we're talking about something that is more end times oriented. So this is something that's going to be preserved. And guess what? The Gentiles have trodden it down. As we know, the Muslims uh, rule over the area where the temple um, uh, wall was supposed to be. So the Dome of the Rock covers that area. And then um, we have promises of preservation. Matthew 24, it says, um, verse 14, it says, In this gospel, the kingdom, the good news, the kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So you already got some big hurdles because you got to get the message out there, but it has gotten out there. And Jesus couldn't direct that, at least not just being human Jesus. And ye shall therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Let's see here. Okay. Getting a little ahead of myself. So when we see this, we see that the gospel is preserved. Uh, we also know that 
the Gospels published. The Mark 13.10, and the Gospel must first be published among all nations, which we conclude all languages, which has been done. And um, then he talks about his death. So first, um, let's see if I got this right. Mark. Is it eight? And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of elders, and the chief priests and scribes will be killed after three days and after three days rise again. So this is interesting because Jesus here is predicting his death. And not only that, but he's doing so in the Gospel of Mark, which the text critics claim is the earliest Gospel. I actually believe that the Gospel of Mark is earlier than they do, but I believe that the Gospels were all written before they did because they made it up. We know they made it up because they were supposed to be centuries later. But the existence of the New Testament Proclama showed that to not be the case. All right, so um, let's see here. Matthew 26. Twenty six sixty one and said this fellow said I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. Well, where do you say that? Well that's in John two. And Jesus um, 2.19, John 2.19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it again. So here he is, and he's talking about himself. He's using a little bit of metaphor. Uh, however, he says it plainly to his apostles. So twice he's now predicted this, that he's going to die. And um, let me see if there's something else. And he's going to raise again. Now, um, we have uh, the witness of the apostles. And then we have a, another witness, uh, the public. So, um, that is a prediction before he ever died and rose again. And how are you going to predict that you're going to raise again? Matthew 24. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came for him, for he, for to show him that the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another shall not be uh, thrown down. So Jesus is now predicting the destruction of Jerusalem. Now Mark is supposed to be written before AD 70. It's supposed to be written at the latest in the 60s, but probably more like the 50s. So Jesus is hitting the nail on the head. Um, See here. I'm trying to make sure I hit the points. Okay, so what do you have here? You have the long term. You have the short term. Why did I bring up the woman at the well? Here's why. 
Because G, the only reason that they would have put that in there is because Jesus had a reputation. And Jesus had a reputation for not sinning. So, uh, you have the woman at the well, and apparently it's obvious to everybody that he's a prophet. So, you know, we already got something there that we know this guy's probably a prophet. And then we also know that the gospel did make it all over the country, all over the seas. And um, finally, we know that, um, and also, of course, the Gentiles are, you know, trying to take over Jerusalem. But after all that stuff goes down, the gospel, you know, the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel being published spread all over the earth. And few, if anybody, has ever accomplished anything like that. So, um, Jesus has now been tested and shown to be a prophet of God. Now, this helps us as far as our initial steps. There are some critics who uh, allow for this, They, uh, especially New Agers. They uh, believe that, okay, well, some people can work miracles. Some people do have psychic phenomena. And when you combine that with what we'll be going over later, it's amazing. Um, we'll go ahead and we will catch you a little bit later.